ready to go. Please. All right. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, friends. Uh, let me to welcome you most um, uh, kindly to the online discussion uh, on a very important and uh, current issue as the EU Green Deal and Ukraine's Green Transition, Common Goals and Transformation Challenges. Indeed, there are some issues to be discussed. So the European Union and Ukraine are associated partners. So we have lots in common. So we have a big agenda in front of us, not just uh, you know, approximating, uh, harmonizing uh, uh, our legisla uh, legislation, having a lot of political and economic dialogue, but again, affected by some sectorial cooperation. One of the uh, uh, present uh, and current uh, initiatives is Green Deal. And Ukraine is a part of this Green Deal, having very ambitious uh, task, I mean, to cut its emissions by 65% uh, uh, by 2030, which makes uh, Ukraine economy much exposed to the impacts coming from the Green Deal towards uh, economic cooperation and trade with the European Union. I will remind you that the European Union is to introduce uh, a carbon border adjustment mechanism. And this instrument is about to make impossible to avoid carbon leakage by applying to imports the same carbon cost that EU manufacturers face within the EU under the emission trading system. To be precise, it's about the uh, you know, laying down a uh, um, level playing field, not uh, allowing anybody, I mean, to gain any uh, competitive advantages because of the different costs or application. So here today we are to discuss this issue because I am sure Green Deal will affect uh, uh, Ukraine's economy and trade with the European Union. So we have to see from now on all the um, Compl uh, complications which might uh, come up uh, because of this uh, uh, of the, the recent initiatives and to be ready to make certain decisions or corrections which might be needed in order not to stop trade and economic development on both uh, uh, sides of the border. I'm very happy that uh, today we will have a possibility to listen to my colleague um, uh, Nikolai Stefanuta. He is my Romanian colleague uh, first time in the European Parliament, but a uh, very um, competent uh, colleague. And he is from the Committee of Environment, Public Health and Food Safety. So he is a, a rapporteur on, uh, on this uh, carbon uh, uh, border adjustment mechanism and knows much more than anybody probably um, uh, among us. So I'm very happy to invite uh, Nikolai Stefanuta to make his first uh, statement and presentation, but before, so I'm very happy to ask uh, Ostap Semerak, uh, a partner of Vasil Isil and Partners, former Minister of Ecology and Natural Resources of Ukraine, to make uh, some practical announcements and to start our debate. Ostap. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Petras, for for this uh, event, for the initiative and uh, for support of this discussion that is really very important because uh, on my mind, that is one of the first um, uh, example when Ukraine and EU are trying to discuss uh, the legislature or draft of legislature, EU legislature before adoption. And that is a good signal and that is a good uh, uh, way how to cooperate and how to make stronger each other and i'm i'm happy to welcome all our participants from eu side uh, that is members of european parliament and uh, uh, representatives of the european commission and uh, from ukrainian side we have members of ukrainian parliament we have um, uh, we have uh, people from ukrainian government uh, both from uh, environment uh, um, ministry and Minister of Economy, and uh, we have uh, as well Ukrainian um, Kyiv School of Economics, that is one of the prominent of the of the 
um, brightest, I will say, uh, think tank in Ukraine um, that has um, good uh, uh, research and they will share with us uh, their, their thoughts. It will enforce us and make our discussion more uh, scientific, I will say, and more clear. So a uh, few words, um, not, not to spend too much time <clears throat> and to, to give more opportunities to, to talk and to discuss. I want to say that we have in interpretation. And if anyone wants to, to, to use Ukrainian language, you have to choose uh, uh, this icon interpretation and, and use uh, um, icon UK, that's Ukrainian, not United Kingdom, but it's Ukrainian language and uh, English. Um, so we are, we are trying to, uh, to, to, to take a place of United Kingdom in the European Union, by the way, but uh, that is the first signal of it. Uh, <laughs> so in, in this, in this um, good, um, good mood, uh, so let, let's start our, our talk. And uh, I'm not sure, Petras, if uh, Nikolai is already with us, uh, um, um, because... Um, that, that's the that's the question still, but um, but anyway, um, yeah, I I think that maybe we have to ask uh, him by other sources of communication. But when we are trying to to work with him, I would like to to um, to ask um, um, to start our talk from Ukrainian side. My colleague from Ministry of Environment. Uh, and natural resources, uh, Deputy Minister uh, Irina Stavchuk. Irina is with us. And um, really, that is very important to hear for both Ukrainian and EU side. Uh, what is the, uh, what is the, where, where is Ukraine just now in, in, uh, in our policy of decarbonization? And uh, um, what is um, our uh, achievements in a uh, in this uh, in this field and uh, Irina, uh, the floor is your. Please uh, please give us uh, firstly introduction on on our on our achievements. Uh, thank you, Astap. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Very pleased to be at this event. Um, I will start with saying that climate change over the last year became quite high on the political agenda in Ukraine. We have a very active uh, coordination with European Union and the set up uh, coordination uh, on Green Deal, which is chaired by Olga Stefanishina, Vice Prime Minister on the side of Ukraine, and Katarina Maternova from European side. And over the last year, we had two meetings where we had discussed a lot of issues with many experts involved and in terms of what's happening on climate policy in different sectors because climate is really is a cross-sectoral issue which covers many uh, areas of economy. In terms of our policy over the last year we have uh, achieved tremendous uh, shifts and uh, steps which were made. The first and the biggest one is the adoption of, of reducing emissions by 65% from uh, 1990 to 2030. We also launched the system for monitoring, reporting and verification on greenhouse gases in the industrial companies, which is a first step to understand much better the emissions, but also to start working on emission trading system. We also launched a system of much better data collection on ozone depleting substances and fluorinated greenhouse gases. And we also developed and improved the strategy on climate change adaptation in Ukraine. So all of this has been already achieved. I must also say that the process of um, consultations with our NDC was not easy. It was really full of very uh, active and difficult discussions with sectoral ministries, but especially with different businesses and uh, both sides had to go to compromises. So we really feel that the target that we have adopted and which was really discussed on many, many levels 
uh, in many details is actually the one which kind of a compromise and a balanced number in terms of both ambition, because we really have to reduce emissions and we really have to implement a lot of activities, but on the other side is also implementable. Um, Achievement of itself, because we really have to develop and implement a lot of measures in different sectors, as I said, but also to make sure that almost 100 to billion of euros are invested in different sectors of economy by 2030. So already from the NDC kind of dimensions. The first one is development of NDC implementation action plan, a kind of Ukrainian Green Deal. And we are now working with the ministries to identify all the activities which are already planned, but also gaps in achievement of key transformations which we identified in our NDC. The second one is work on financial strategy, because we will not be able to implement it if we don't have a finance, uh, financial systems in place. And that includes a wide range of activities from understanding and prioritization and kind of tagging in our own budget systems, how we plan budget programs, how we plan regional programs. It goes to implementation and development of uh, policy instruments for the new financial instruments like green bonds. It goes to development of a strategy of understanding how we should um, reform our environmental and carbon finance system, which means what has to happen with our environmental and carbon pricing and taxes and how we should spend the the, the money which state collects and how we should reinvest these funds into the uh, enhanced decarbonization. So all of these issues uh, are part of the big financial kind of strategy and plan to understand and to make sure that what we planned, we will be able to implement. And the last one is uh, uh, improvement of uh, climate governance in general in Ukraine which is coordination within different uh, bodies of the government and uh, like having the procedures in place that we understand and we have all the necessary policies and measures. We collect data. Uh, there are systems in place to review and put additional measures if we are not on track. And on that, we are working on development of the framework law on climate, um, on good examples of uh, climate laws which already are uh, in the world. And hopefully by the end of the month, we will uh, be able to present the draft of this law for uh, consultations. So um, we have a very rich agenda on us. Uh, we have a very good cooperation with EU and a lot of planned activities for the next year. We have agreed on development of the finance platform, which is also chaired by Vice Prime Minister Olga Stefanishina and will be coordinated with Katarina Maternova. So really looking forward to all those plans and its implementation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Irina. And uh, that, that's really uh, significant to, to, to hear about um, uh, our move, Ukrainian move on that, on that way that, that started uh, at least uh, immediately after, um, after signing and ratification by Ukraine of Paris Agreement. And um, in, this, in this moment, I want to ask uh, Marcus uh, to join our, our discussion and actually um, after uh, after Irina presentation, uh, Irina's presentation, that is great to to have to have your uh, point of view on on the main goals of uh, European Union um, policy of uh, of Green Deal and especially um, part of CBAM that is important for us. And uh, Marcus, that will be important to to understand uh, what is the status of uh, CBAM Act in, now in in the European uh, Parliament and uh, in, in all this uh, European co-legislation uh, co process. Um, 
please uh, can can you can you tell us um, the floor the floor is yours please yes um thank you very much for for having me uh, one of the disadvantages with having Irina in is that she's covered <laughs> most wide angle angles already which is which is really good um before i go into sort of cbam specifically let me um, briefly just dwell on the on the cooperation um, uh, that uh, Rina already outlined, and, uh, and what we're doing um, jointly there, um, I think one key uh, effect to to highlight was that uh, Ukraine, first of all, was one of the first partners to really show interest in a deepened dialogue on on the European uh, Green Deal, and understood uh, what the uh, the potential or um, if you will, also the threat uh, of uh, not um, taking it seriously, it might actually mean for, for industry and, and for development. Um, what has been very positive from the beginning was that this um, focused uh, dialogue that we are now having was kicked off by um, the Executive Vice President Timmermans from the Commission and Prime Minister Schmihal jointly. So it's been really the, the top politi uh, political leadership that uh, was advocating and supporting this from, from the very start. And we've then uh, quickly got into the um, sort of uh, cooperative uh, mode after the uh, two gentlemen kicked it off this process in uh, February this year. Um, the first dialogue, what we uh, covered, and this was really a very broad agenda. We had climate governance, as Serena already outlined. Uh, we started discussing green transition financing. We've got energy efficiency there, which more and more is seen in the EU, but also in Ukraine as a measure of uh, energy security as well. Um, and thus is getting more and more traction. Um, we had discussed the uh, transition of, uh, of coal regions and industrial alliances, which includes uh, hydrogen technologies, raw materials, um, um, batteries, and uh, also forestry. Now, um, the discussions also including the flagship project like the Energy Efficiency Fund is, uh, is, is really a key where the US also already contributed more than 100 million euros to uh, drive this forward with very good uh, cooperation. And we're currently talking um, about uh, commencing the second phase of the Energy uh, Efficiency Fund here. On the coal regions, uh, what we're ultimately discussing now is uh, Ukraine's announcement to phase out coal in the electricity sector by 2035. Um, with the uh, president coming out uh, with that statement, um, sort of preceding a bit what industry uh, in Ukraine was planning for, which was more like 2040, obviously a bit of adjustment uh, needs to be done, but the, uh, the passage uh, sort of is clear. And um, on the uh, raw materials uh, front, a strategic partnership was uh, signed, an MOU between the EU and Ukraine in, uh, in July, and that was uh, on raw materials and batteries and uh, supported by Executive Vice President Sefcovic, who was in, uh, in Kiev um, at that time. On Hydrogen, um, just the last couple of months, uh, Ukraine industry has been uh, visiting Brussels, talking with DG Energy and uh, other DGs involved in terms of uh, trying to understand the regulatory framework that is uh, coming out in, in December now and, and what that means for, for industry. So there's a lot going on. We had a second dialogue in Kiev on the focus dialogue in September, which uh, Irina also um, attended. And uh, there the dialogue expanded further on the um, environmental topics for the first time. Um, so it's uh, that dialogue is growing. What is important is that there's a lot of joint work that is, uh, that is done where we're trying to um, really support uh, actions jointly with our, with our teams. Now, what becomes um, urgent is the need to adapt 
adopt some legal acts uh, on key reforms that are currently still blocked in RADA on environment uh, control on waste, uh, industrial emissions, for example, and biodiversity. So what remains key, despite all the good cooperation, obviously, is for Ukraine to effectively uh, implement and enforce uh, key legislation. Um, in our talks on forestry, um, the need was highlighted for a rapid adoption of a national forest management strategy in Ukraine, um, which, which can drive also the, uh, I think, presidential initiatives in that area forward uh, much faster, and also including the um, circular economy. Um, Irina already mentioned that uh, we talked about the um, green transition financing and what we will do with the um, next uh, meeting early uh, next year is a back-to-back -back with, um, with the IFIs, the international financial institutions, which we are cooperating with a lot more closely now. And in general, um, for success in these various areas that we cooperate, donor coordination also becomes more and more important, including with the, uh, with the IFIs. That will be the next stage now that the NDC2, um, the, sorry, the National Determined Contributions, the update that was mentioned at the very beginning um, has, been, has been sent to the end. Um, the financing uh, part obviously becomes uh, also more and more important. Um, the government we know is currently working at the, um, on the NDC implementation action plan. Uh, also on sectoral uh, decarbonization strategies and um, the sort of long-term uh, action plan. And once these plans are finalized early next quarter, um, I think we can also uh, discuss a lot more targetedly or in a targeted fashion, um, the, uh, the financing on these, uh, on these various uh, pieces. Um, now coming to CBAM, more more specifically if we and it's still a long way off um, it is still being debated you know it's a proposal um, uh, Ukraine has been uh, involved uh, from from an early phase uh, onwards which was very good had discussions um, at the director level at DG Taksut who's leading this um, and, and these discussions uh, are ongoing, especially what you do about certain, um, uh, certain sectors, how you, how you can maybe um, carve out uh, special transition periods uh, in, in certain sectors. But irrespective of that, um, and the EU uh, again needs to obviously implement a lot of this Green Deal uh, legislation on the ground as well, which is not yet done. But the more we drive towards energy efficiency, the more industry seriously looks at um, green hydrogen, uh, which, which is starting, um, the more um, Ukraine is looking at phasing out coal and, and all the other measures, the less obviously CBAM will be an issue. And, and I think that is, that is key. Um, Sometimes I think, um, or I find, people are hooked up a bit uh, too much on just CBAM as such. But obviously, it is, um, in many parts, uh, the impact it will have is just a result on how much all the other measures um, that, uh, that Ukraine controls are being, are being implemented. Um, the EU is very closely... Um, at uh, on, at Ukrainians' uh, side, um, I think that should that should never be doubted. What has changed, really, I think, in the EU is that um, there is a real think, if you will, about nearshoring versus uh, offshoring. So, really, getting also energy, clean energy that uh, EU needs from uh, from its direct neighborhood. And Ukraine has a huge potential there. That's the, that's the close cooperation. Thank you. Thank you, Marcos. That is uh, very important for Ukrainian side to hear. And uh, at the moment, um, I want to, uh, to welcome 
uh, member of European Parliament, um, Nikolai Stefanuta, uh, he joined our discussion just now. And uh, uh, Nikolai, he is a shadow reporter uh, in the Envy Committee on CBAM issue. And, uh, and Nikolai, that, that, that's, that's a pleasure to, to have you uh, in our discussion. And can I ask you, <clears throat> Can I ask you to, to start uh, your presentation with the, with the status uh, of, uh, of uh, CBAM Act in a committee just now at all in the parliament? And uh, that is very important to understand, especially after Marcus' presentation, uh, what, um, what um, assistance um, uh, can Ukraine count uh, uh, on the um, on, on, in the process of implementing this new legislature, um, Nikolai, the floor is yours. Please. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Samarak. Uh, it is a pleasure to be to be here at this event. I would like to thank my friend and colleague uh, Petras Austervicius for this very important debate, and to in, to assure you that you have friends in this house. You have a friend in, in me and Mr. Ostrovichus and many others who are very careful. And we always say that the European legislation is not meant to hurt friends. Uh, it is not meant to hurt friends. It is meant to, to do something that is momentous and that is to transform the European economy towards a sustainable economy of the future. And actually, uh, if, Ukraine, and I know Ukraine is, is serious about um, uh, a European agenda, about going towards the European agenda, then you will know that this is where we're going. And we are serious about it. Europe is very serious about going towards a Green Deal agenda. And uh, um, any country that, that is close to the Union, that it's in its neighborhood or has deep and comprehensive association agreements and so on and free trade areas, will know that this is the direction. I wanted to, to start with this, with this point because it, it, is, it is important. I know that uh, Ukraine might be concerned with more pressing issues and so are we. Believe me, I'm a Romanian. I don't look at the troop mobilization at your, fronter, uh, at your frontier uh, in a relaxed manner, not at all. I think it's a, it's a great danger for our security, it is a grave danger for the entire Europe. But, you know, uh, as Chamberlain said, uh, sometimes some peoples are far away and about which we know nothing. And the further you are from the, the, the conflict, uh, the less you tend to care. We are close to the conflict and we do care. Now, uh, the, you will have seen that Europe has, has um, adopted the so-called fit, fit for 55 package. Um, it contains many, many issues, but the main, the main uh, political point here is that all the European legislation, including the budget, I'm an MEP that sits in environment, budget, and foreign affairs. And I think these three are so connected today that, that uh, I'm in a privileged position to kind of understand just how connected they are. So... Uh, not only legislation, but also all the budget that goes um, from the European Union is linked to environmental factors. And our external instruments will also be linked to environmental factors. And uh, now, uh, as regards uh, CBAM, for which I'm responsible in the Environment uh, Committee, I know that many in your uh, industries perhaps are concerned about uh, CBAM in a way or another. Uh, let's let me start from the beginning to say that it for us it is not a trading tool and it's not a protectionistic instrument. Uh, this is a message I also deliver to the United States because, as I said from the beginning, CBAM is not here to punish friends. CBAM is here to help fight help fight climate change, addressing carbon leakage, uh, preserving the effectiveness of EU, EU ETS and EU climate efforts. So um, now. This includes, obviously, for us internally, the tightening of the EU emission trading system and the phasing out of free allocations of EU ETS allowances. 
but um, we think that by applying a carbon price at the border, the CBAM creates an incentive for third countries to adopt effective policies to fight climate change. Uh, so I'm not sure if Ukraine does have a system in, in which uh, uh, there's any carbon pricing involved or not, or whether you are working of linking a carbon pricing system, perhaps linking to the EU ETS or having your own carbon pricing uh, system. It is, however, uh, a recognized tool. So if you did have a carbon pricing system, the, the way it works right now, it's that the EU would recognize it and would, would deduct we deduct that percentage from the CBAM price. So if the third countries introduce a carbon pricing at the same level of the EU, their producers will not pay any CBAM charge at all, as the carbon price paid at home will be fully deducted from the CBAM. Obviously, countries that apply the EU ETS or ETS linked will benefit from a ex complete exemption from the CBAM. CBAM. Now, obviously, you, we see it as an incentive for third country producers to reduce their carbon footprint, but you might see it as a cost. No, it's, uh, it's as easy as that. Uh, now let me put on my, my uh, budget uh, hat on and, and tell you that from all this money that we will be gathering, so the own resources that generated from CBAM, um, I believe that a good portion, if not all of it, will have to go to external countries to fight uh, climate uh, climate goals. Uh, why? Well, this is also for protection for us that the instrument is WTO compatible because uh, um, the main intention of this particular own resource would have been to pay also for our next generation uh, deal, the, the package of loans that we, we made as a union. And obviously there's a great pressure, but from the trading point of view, uh, the money should go towards goals for uh, climate goals around the world, particularly in the least developing countries. But I can perhaps see an opportunity here also uh, in relation to, to countries in our, our neighborhood, etc. Uh, in addition to this, I know that the EU and our agencies stand ready to engage with partners, provides with our close partners to provide support for investments into climate neutral and resilient future. I do believe our heading uh, six in the budget that concerns um, external relations will be full of uh, funding lines that support environmental transition projects, investments, et cetera, towards uh, countries such as yours. And in addition to this, I do believe a big part will be in the um, uh, continuing to, to assist with transposition implementation of climate and en energy key for the membership, but also with technical assistance. So in a way, I know that, for instance, your steel industry or other industries are concerned about our CBAM, but at the same time, I'm not concerned because I see how our budget is focused towards climate goals, including our macroeconomic assistance packages uh, that are that are aimed at uh, at uh, external countries. I don't know if I really answered uh, all of your concerns, but I'm I'm here to to listen also and to deliver some more. Uh, obviously, my notes are much longer, but your question, Mr. Samara, was very targeted. So do let me know if I can go on rambling, or would you want me to focus on something else? Thank you, thank you, Nikolai. Um... We appreciate your participation, and that is important uh, for for Ukraine to have uh, this uh, this conversation with you because because of your membership in a right committee in a in a European Parliament, and we guess that we will uh, we will have in the future uh, next steps of our communication. But uh, um, I think we will have a little bit more questions in the second round. I know that you are planning to leave a little bit early, us, but please, if you will, if you will. No, I'm, I'm here with you. I'm here with you. It's great, important great, to, to great, stay great. on and listen. Great. Thank you very much. And uh, I would like to, to, to ask just now to present shortly uh, the latest um, um, research that we have from Kiev School of Economic, uh, Economics and um, Natalia uh, Shapoval. She is a chairperson 
uh, of uh, Kyiv School of Economics and Vice President for Policy Research. Uh, um, Natalia, I would, I would like to, to ask you, what is your main conclusions uh, in, in, in the research of, of your think tank? And uh, I would like to ask you ex extremely <clears throat> to stress your uh, attention on one of the main <clears throat> uh, uh, target of, uh, of the CBAM legislature that's uh, fight with uh, carbon leakage uh, and uh, maybe uh, more information about your predictions uh, on, uh, on the financial, uh, financial and uh, economical impact on, on Ukraine. So the floor is your please. Yeah, thank you, Astab. Uh, how much uh, time do we have for the presentation, given the constraints of us? Yeah, we agreed. We agreed earlier ten ten minutes. Is it is okay. it okay? To... Yeah, yeah, totally. Um, thank you very much. Be faster. Uh, thank you. So indeed, uh, upon the request of the Vice Prime Minister for uh, EU integration, uh, Olga Stefanishina, KC uh, prepared uh, evaluation of the. Uh, potential impact of uh, CBAM on the industries um, and uh, on the economy in general. So I will uh, briefly talk you through the results and uh, then my colleague uh, Elena Belousova will uh, uh, focus on specific industries. So uh, what we did, we uh, basically uh, took the proposal for a regulation of the uh, European Parliament and of the Council uh, on the CBAM that was uh, uh, available several months ago. And uh, based on that, we built several scenarios of uh, how CBAM uh, could turn for uh, Ukrainian industries, namely uh, metallurgy, uh, um, uh, electricity, cement, and uh, uh, fertilizers. So the general conclusion is that uh, for these uh, businesses, uh, this is a quick, uh, for these businesses, uh, there will be uh, approximately uh, 396 million euros uh, losses annually uh, because of the uh, CBAM itself and uh, uh, changes in the prices of the, uh, of the products. And for the economy in general, uh, for the uh, industries uh, that uh, would be but then hypothetically under impact of CBAM, uh, there would be around one tenth of the percent of GDP uh, loss uh, every year. Um, so we also looked into the question of uh, leakage. Um, so based on uh, uh, our uh, assessment, uh, there is no carbon leakage and uh, it can be uh, demonstrated by the fact that uh, in the industries that are likely to be under the effect of the CBAM, there has been a decrease in experts and there has been decrease uh, in uh, greenhouse gases emission. Uh, and uh, uh, eventually we also did not find any instances of the um, you know, enterprises that are establishing uh, some infrastructure in Ukraine in these uh, industries uh, uh, for this or for any other uh, reason. Um, so, uh, kind of this, uh, car this carbon leakage um, hypothesis, uh, we did not find evidence for uh, that. Uh, so, uh, right now, uh, the, our conclusion and recommendation is that given that the effect uh, of this uh, yeah, the previous speakers mentioned that it's kind of they're trying to make it not a trade barrier in the EU, but um, kind of from the perspective of the economic analysis, but not the you know policy discussion, it is a trade barrier. Um, and given that uh, Ukraine is not such a big pollution as many other uh, countries, uh, and uh, Ukraine has been implementing the targets on a reduction of the uh, greenhouses that were set and is uh, trying to be even uh, more uh, ambitious in the future. Uh, it, it makes sense to um, consider, you know, specific uh, uh, details of the uh, benchmarks that would be set for Ukrainian enterprises, 
uh, and uh, specific financial instruments that were discussed by previous uh, speakers to make sure that uh, this uh, instrument doesn't really uh, make a really a quick devastating effect for the um, very big industries that uh, employ uh, many people uh, and uh, that they would you know, be without any financial leverage to make any modernization. So um, my colleague, uh, Elena Deloso, will quickly go through the uh, you know, uh, hypothetical scenarios, how it could turn out for the industries. Uh, Olena, uh, are you? Uh, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Uh, I'd like to start with a, a slight uh, explanation about uh, the uh, theoretical and uh, our methodological background of this study. Uh, we uh, consider two uh, main effects uh, which uh, would have uh, uh, SIBAM on uh, Ukrainian business. The first is uh, the SIBAM payment itself. Uh, as you see on the slide, it's uh, um, up to uh, 100, 101 million euros uh, uh, per year. And uh, the second effect is uh, the reduction of export volumes, which would be caused because uh, of uh, uh, relocation of uh, redistribution of the production uh, between uh, existing importer importers to the European Union and uh, uh, internal production of European Union. And uh, we uh, considered uh, these two effects calculating our uh, estimations about the laws of, of Ukraine and uh, um, our hypothesis was uh, that uh, every country which is uh, uh, which has a significant in, uh, impact on the European market will be impacted by SIBAM and uh, uh, then um, it, uh, um, uh, European market will, will seek the new balance. So uh, uh, the price uh, of these goods on European market will be slightly higher. So uh, partly um, CBAM effect will be covered by the uh, increase of the prices. So it would be uh, for European uh, consumers. Uh, and uh, they... Uh, um, uh residual effect will, will be uh, on the countries uh, uh, who uh, currently import on uh, European Union. And uh, because of that effect, we will have uh, that uh, uh, relocation, uh, which I said, uh, to European producers. Uh, so to uh, protect them uh, from carbon leakage. Um, I'd like to uh, turn to the next slide and... Uh, um, uh, uh, we'll go to electricity sector. Um, now, uh, current situation is uh, that uh, the export of uh, Ukraine uh, is uh, uh, only coal generation. Uh, and we see that uh, looking at the uh, slide, uh, graphic on the left, we see that uh, that uh, situation uh, cannot take place anymore with uh, Sibam because if we take uh, CBAM uh, and uh, uh, added to the variable costs of uh, coal generation, we see that uh, it is higher than average uh, prices on the target markets. It's uh, Hungary, Romania, and Poland. And uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, Ukraine is not uh, integrated to ENTSOE, and uh, you know, uh, before that, we cannot export any energy mix, uh, uh, which uh, would include, uh, for example, nuclear power and uh, renewable energy. And um, before that integration, SIBAM uh, uh, would uh, hurt uh, all the import that uh, today uh, uh, was to the European Union. Uh, after the integration, we expect that... Uh, um, Ukraine would increase uh, the, uh, its export to the European Union and uh, it would uh, uh, export some mix of uh, coal generation and uh, renewables and nuclear power. Uh, and if uh, uh, we would export mix, uh, 
the price average price of uh, that export uh, will uh, be um, uh, we would uh, we would be able to export that mix uh, and uh, uh, even partly uh, eight percent of TPP's power uh, to um, help to balance uh, energy market uh, for Hungary, Romania, and Poland. Um, uh, okay, next slide. Um, steel industry is uh, maybe the most uh, uh, hurt by, uh, by CBAM payments. Uh, and uh, we studied that um, the CBAM implementation would uh, uh, lead to 9% export decrease of volumes. And uh, uh, the total effect uh, would be up to uh, 248 million of euros annually. Um, and uh, um, uh, it's the main sector which is hurt by uh, CBAM because uh, um, Ukrainian economy is export oriented and uh, steel, uh, steel uh, products are uh, one of the main goods uh, of uh, uh, Ukrainian exports. So, uh, so uh, move to next slide, please. Um, talking about fertilizers, uh, we have here uh, the tendency that um, due to high uh, prices of, of gas, uh, we already have a tendency to decrease uh, the amount of exports uh, of fertilizers. I mean, uh, here, ammonia, uh, urea, uh, ammonium nitrate, and carbon ammonium nitrate. And uh, uh, as you see on the graphic on the left, we, even without SBAM, have the tendency to decrease uh, some volumes of export. But if uh, we would have uh, the impact of CBAM here, uh, this uh, decrease would be even 38% higher uh, than uh, without it. So this industry would be uh, short uh, that much. And uh, the last uh, slide, um, Natalia, the last slide is the uh, uh, cement industry, industry uh, it's uh, um, the industry which is uh, hurt less uh, than uh, other uh, because uh, cement is a local product. Uh, we don't have much uh, amount of export of this product, uh, but uh, we also see that we would have a, a two five percent decrease of uh, the amount of export and. Uh, uh, the loss of, for this industry too. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you. So, yeah, to sum it up, uh, yeah, the effect is uh, very big on uh, trade of Ukraine and uh, kind of our suggestion would be to really look uh, into detail how to make uh, this uh, reduction of greenhouses uh, work without uh, such a big uh, distortion of uh, trade. Thank you. Um, thank you, Natalia, and uh, thank you, Olena, uh, about this um, uh, presentation. And uh, I think this is very important for us because uh, we all understand that the first uh, period of uh, or first stage of uh, Zimbabwe implementation will cause not all countries, but uh, uh, because of the uh, sectors, we understand that that will be Ukraine, Turkey, China, Russia, and uh, uh, maybe some other countries and in this case uh, that is very important to understand that among of all that countries Ukraine is with a uh, quite a specific situation causing because we have uh, association agreement and because uh, we have uh, uh, the conflict uh, and aggression of Russian Federation on, on the east uh, of Ukraine and all this uh, industry mostly are allocated uh, at the eastern part of, of the Ukraine. And that is very important to understand and to predict what will be the, the, the effect of, of such instrument. And um, now I want to, uh, to ask uh, Ivana klimpos uh, the chairperson of the committee of uh, the Ukrainian parliament, Verkhovna Rada, on Ukraine's integration into the European Union to join us uh, right now. 
uh, Ivana, that is uh, very important to, to have a parliamentary point of view and uh, um, that is um, very important to understand how in Ukrainian parliament uh, do you see um, this climate policies modernization? Do you see any chance for using these new policies for modernizing our association agreement with the European Union? And do you have uh, um, do you have uh, this dialogue between uh, between Ukrainian and EU side uh, in this case? Uh, Ivana, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Ostap. I thank you, Petras, for initiating this conversation. I think it's very timely. I'm very happy to, to hear this uh, <clears throat> numerous, uh, this, this huge amount of information that was presented by colleagues from the government. Uh, obviously, it doesn't seem in the parliament that uh, something of that scope is ongoing in the Ukrainian government at this particular moment. We obviously do understand, uh, in, at least in the Committee on, Euro on Ukraine's integration into the EU, uh, that uh, Green Deal and Ukraine's um, participation in the Green Deal is uh, an instrument not only of uh, adjusting to climate change or meeting the challenges of um, um, ecological scope, but definitely is a matter of uh, economic and civilizational survival, if you wish. And I think that this, from, from this perspective, we actually should look on those uh, both challenges and possibilities that it presents for the economy of such type as Ukrainian economy. Uh, dealing with uh, a lot of other um, numerous challenges in this particular moment and uh, obviously trying to, to see how we can um, uh, take the instruments that are at hand and uh, use the transform and uh, implement the transformation that is needed internally. You know, I do not, I, I probably will not share such a um, optimistic view as we heard, unfortunately, from our colleagues from the, uh, from the government, because unfortunately, I see a lot of, um, a lot of um, obstacles, for example, it has been mentioned by, I think, Marcus, that quite a few of the uh, ecological um, draft laws are being stopped, uh, stuck in the, um, in the Ukrainian parliament for this too. Uh, and more than two years. And we remember very well with OSTAP uh, from our previous uh, work in the, in the government between 2016 and 2019, how difficult it was to go through parliamentary procedures with any of the initiatives that would require additional, um, additional A spending, additional um, modernization and, and transformation for the, for the uh, different economic sectors. So definitely we all understand that uh, green transition, green, uh, green transformation does require a lot of uh, spending, a lot, a lot of resources. And uh, I think that besides the um, important um, internal transformation, including, by the way, something that I think Nikolai has mentioned with regard to non-existing in this particular moment carbon pricing system um, in Ukraine that would have to be introduced in order to actually uh, minimize the, the effects of, for, for that matter, CBAM being introduced. We probably could and should talk already uh, about some kind of Marshall Plan for, like climate Marshall Plan for Ukraine that, um, you know, that, that, that would ensure a Ukraine's transformation. Because I think that, you know, no, no country can actually um, realize the goals of uh, Green Deal or the, the goals of, um, of, of cutting the, the carbon leakage or any other uh, climate change goals on, on its own. And I think you cannot, we all agree that, uh, you know, even introducing CBAM on the borders, you cannot build a, um, uh, a wall that would uh, uh, not allow any, you know, 
carbon emissions coming into the uh, to the EU, especially if we are talking about the country that A has ambitions of joining the European Union, B has um, has this close neighborly position uh, near the uh, European Union. So therefore, I think that uh, instruments, uh, that decisions and instruments uh, should be to, to tackle those problems have to be worked on together. And I, it's about common um, common goals, but also about common decision and uh, decisions and common solutions, which I do not see uh, being developed in such a you know serious scope. It's good that the government is conducting uh, this um, conversation and this dialogue with the European Commission. I'm um, absolutely happy to hear about this, but definitely we are lacking this um, kind of a conversation between the Ukrainian parliament and European parliament, and for that matter, even for the, with the national parliaments of other EU states. And I think that that's about uh, a multi-layer conversation that has to be established also on the parliamentary level, because without um, having parliamentaries, uh, parliamentarians on board, uh, there will be um, you know, difficulty for any initiative to move forward. Moreover, if we are looking, um, if we are hearing about this, um, at this dialogue at this particular moment, I have concerns with, this, with some of the uh, green imitation that I see here. Uh, Marcos has been mentioning you know, the progress with the um, energy efficiency fund, but I want to, to remind the two years we have lost in this work of the energy efficiency fund, and I'm very happy that finally it's kind of unblocked its work. But that's not something that got us closer to actually uh, sorting out some of those um, um, those uh, things that, that you've been mentioning, CBAM being one of them, but then others as, um, as, uh, as part of this, of this bigger legal composition, so to say, uh, they are not uh, sorted, uh, sorted out in this particular moment. I think, you know, when we are talking that uh, it's great that Ukraine has announced by the president of Ukraine, we have announced that we are ready to to um, to ensure that that we are refusing the uh, using of coal by 2035, at least on the on the governmental level, it's um, good ambition. The problem is that it hasn't been discussed with the cabinet of ministers of Ukraine before this pledge was given on the international level. And the problem is that what I see in the internal practices, for example, if I'm looking on the budgetary processes right now, I see that there is a problem because um, because uh, at this particular moment, we see that um, support of uh, fossil fuels, at least in budget terms, is growing in the Ukrainian um, in, in, in Ukraine and uh, in the Ukrainian budget in terms of guarantees for credits and uh, um, so it's growing inside inside of the country. So it's uh, it goes totally in other direction from something that has been announced at this, uh, this particular moment. So, and I also see that there is um, uh, uh, that, that such support of the state is actually decreasing in decarbonization, in, in energy efficiency, in, in different environmental measures. And uh, not to mention the, the problems that we have seen uh, here with regard to green energy and uh, the inability of the state to actually carry on with the difficult, and here I totally agree, there have been very difficult uh, uh, responsibilities of the state here that have been envisaged by the previous, previous governments, but um, when the, the state cannot deliver on this and cannot uh, keep up to the, uh, to the promises, that does not um, lay out a great um, basis for for further conversation. So I think that it's important that we we kind of step away from this green imitation and actually take seriously those numbers that KSE has presented. The KSE team has presented to us in terms of how. Uh, what type of a challenge and what scope of a challenge we will have to deal with and actually try to address these um, issues together oh, in, both internally uh, but with a huge um, 
a number of stakeholders uh, because it's, it's good when we are talking about uh, coordination, but I do not see a real systemic uh, complex work on the state level with all the stakeholders, with businesses, with civil society organizations, with the parliament, with uh, um, uh, with, uh, well, obviously the government and with the European side, but in, on this inclusion of different uh, different stakeholders. I think that, you know, this conversation could be a good step forward for that, um, for that dialogue. And we can build from here because we as a committee have initiated, I think uh, Irina uh, has been present on those, um, has been taken part in those hearings that we have initiated last year. I think it was July initially then September of 2020, when we first were the first committee that initiated hearings on the, how, the, uh, how the country is getting prepared to, the, to meet the uh, ambition of, ambitions of Green Deal and uh, to meet the challenges that, uh, that also will be presenting. So I think here uh, we don't have much of a choice because um, Green Deal implementation is about division of the world today and us. And uh, it's uh, either we are on the on the train of um, uh, joining post-industrial countries and the club of those countries that can kind of uh, and and we can leap uh, leap forward, uh, so to say, or we will be just. Um, uh, lagging behind and running behind the train, trying to catch it, and that this is not an option for Ukrainian economy. So it's good to hear that uh, you know in the European Parliament some of the uh, some of the thinking goes also towards possible financial mechanisms um, to be introduced for Ukraine as a country. And here, I think, uh, and not only the other countries of the, of the more um, uh, extensive kind of uh, neighborhood, but I think this, the, we have to already come to, a specific, uh, come to specifics of those financial instruments before the EU actually gets the uh, final solution and final decision um, internally. Um, as as we do plan to to have um, um, to have a say in this, and also I think that it's very important uh, that uh, even if there is a sporadic activity, there are sporadic activities being held within Ukraine. I think we are also lacking a real political leadership of this particular uh, of this particular um, topic in the Ukrainian politicum. And here I think uh, also. When some people are doing something, it's good, but uh, I don't see it as a uh, cohesive, real cohesive political effort that would be part of the political agenda. It does not come as cross-sectoral uh, activity for the parliamentary committees, definitely not. Um, and I think uh, if we're talking about the, the uh, ecological committee and our committee, these probably are only two that do um, understand in their work uh, the importance of um, of ensuring that uh, that issues that are connected with the uh, with the climate change have to be introduced in in different um, responsibilities and different activities of other committees. But that's definitely not has become yet as part of the political culture in the Ukrainian parliament. Uh, thank you, Ivanka, very much. And I think that uh, this idea of much broader uh, communication and talks about, um, about uh, next steps, uh, that is absolutely what we are trying to start just now. And uh, um, thank you for, for your, <clears throat> for your uh, mentioning economy, Ukrainian economy and um, um, security dimension. That is very important. And uh, with us, we have today <clears throat> Deputy Minister of Economy of Ukraine, <clears throat> uh, Taras, uh, Taras Kachka, who is as well trade representative of Ukraine. And uh, Taras is uh, talking with us uh, from London. So you can, you, can, <clears throat> you can see that Ukraine is talking with uh, EU 
from uh, from both sides, from east and from west. <laughs> and Taras, we are welcoming you um, uh, to, to to join our discussion. And that is very important. That uh, Minister of Economy of Ukraine published um, published its uh, feedback on Sibam proposal uh, on the website of the European Commission. And that is um, important to. Uh, to have this um, this note, and I would like to ask you, how do you uh, see such mechanism uh, affect uh, trade and economic relations between Ukraine and uh, European Union? And how do you see, um, uh, is it possible to create right uh, environment for next uh, legislature to have so-called um, um, lift for Ukrainian industry for its modernization using new decarbonization policy that uh, we have just now uh, to discuss. Taras? Yeah, you know that. Yeah, thank you. So yes, indeed, we are we are talking to to to, to the EU, but still outside of the EU. Yes, so from Kiev or London, so it's uh, it's not the EU. And uh, yeah, I, I would disagree with uh, with uh, many of statements uh, presented earlier. Especially taking the, uh, especially the thesis that uh, uh, CBM is not a measure against friends. Indeed, it is about it, it is against friends, and particular friends, Ukraine, because Ukraine, even according to uh, internal EU calculations, so Ukraine will be suffer tackled most uh, by by this measure. But uh, from my perspective, the issue is that um, the EU. Uh, started to uh, tackle, so started to influence outer world without understanding this outer world. So uh, it's not only Ukraine, but uh, Moldova as well has more ambitious uh, NDCs than the EU, because both Ukraine and, and Moldova decided to decrease uh, carbon greenhouse gas emissions to the level higher, much higher than, than the European Union is intended to, to do so. But then the level of usage of uh, coal in energy is less times less than in in the EU. So we have, uh, if we calculate all non-carbon sources of energy, including hydro and, and nuclear and the renewables, we have up to seventy three percent, depending on the season, of course. But in between sixty five and seventy three percent of non-carbon uh, and uh, energy energy generation. And our our deadline for phasing out coal, whatever the deadline declared by, by government, is more ambitious than the Polish one, for example. So that's why I think that before talking about uh, ambitious in climate, we need to take seriously our neighbors. And uh, I think that the EU, unfortunately, behaves in a very selfishness, uh, self, selfish, uh, selfish uh, manner. That's why we need to defend our position, and that, that's why we are so hostile against carbon body adjustment mechanism. Despite the fact that the idea is is uh, quite quite good. The second big thing is uh, once again bad assumptions about carbon price. Indeed, uh, the EU media is are full of news about highest prices for carbon, but real price, actual price paid by EU producers. Uh, is really a minor one because they have free allowances, three quarter of all carbon allocations for steel in the EU are still free, so that we need to divide the current price uh, as well, at least by four for steel. And then as well, we, we need to understand that currently uh, carbon pricing is only financial hedge instrument. It's not actual price paid by, by producers because actual price might be bought uh, earlier and the actual price of this carbon carbon allocations is uh, lower. At the same time, Ukraine has carbon tax, which is quite quite simple and actually does not depend on free allocations. Everyone pays it. So uh, that's why our system uh, may be more, uh, more efficient than the EU one. The last but not least is the carbon leakage issue, where we have no evidence of carbon leakage and uh, for, for any industry to be covered by carbon border adjustment mechanism. Etc. Etc. On on forestry and, and deforestation, this is one of the most complex complex issue where I think the EU has really contradicting interest towards Ukraine because it is declared that the EU is fighting for reforestation in Europe, but at the same time the EU has very hostile interest to uh, just increase importation of 
wood from from Ukraine, which actually uh, with with no care about sustainability of this forest. So that's why we need to have a really honest and uh, uh, attentive discussion to each other. So it's not like we need to defend. I think that before um, taking measures, not only on Sibam, but generally on Fit for 55 measures, we need to take into account that the EU, so the Brussels and EU institutions are actually influencing all Europe. And that's why this is like a, Nobly so oblige for, for, for Brussels to understand the clear, clear impact of neighboring neighboring industries. At the same time, EU, so Ukraine can help EU in uh, achieving decarbonization, in decreasing carbon footprint by integrating our industries like electricity or steel or agriculture into the EU systems uh, and the EU, EU industries. And we have uh, good, uh, good signals for this. So that's why we need to reverse the, reverse the understandings of what, what exactly we are looking for, what, what are the uh, dangers we are, we are trying to tackle. Because in, in reality, Ukrainian policy and development of Ukrainian economy is actually helping the EU to, take, uh, to achieve its, uh, to realize its, its ambitions. And last but not least about the legislation. I think that the one of uh, the worst misinterpretation of Ukrainian environmental policy is that it actually failed to deliver. But in reality, what, happen, what, what is happening in Ukraine is the same discussion as in the EU. It is how to find a balance between sustain between economy development and sustainability. And I think that the, let's say, radicalization of discussion in the Ukrainian parliament led to the fact that some initiative temporarily failed. But, but in reality, the interest of Ukrainian industry economy is to develop in a sustainable manner and be a carbon neutral as soon as possible with support of state. So that's why we need to, uh, let's say, recalibrate uh, the, the approach to the climate initiatives including not only from point of view of governmental initiatives, but also how we discussed it in Parliament and with our stakeholders. So with really attentive uh, policy towards your neighbors, you can really achieve, uh, achieve uh, let's say, climate goals, declared climate goals, without necessity to punish Ukrainian producers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Taras. Um, uh, thank you very much for, for your participation and uh, uh, with the trust we we finished the first round of our uh, of our discussion and now we are moving uh, to uh, to the questions and i i want to say that uh, that is a possibility for for our audience to to ask questions to any of uh, of uh, participant uh, so i i would like to ask uh, if uh, we have such questions and using using the time that we we are still uh, do not have uh, questions in in our um, message line, I, I want to ask Marcus. Uh, Marcus, um, look, um, that is very important to 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 read uh, uh, all drafts of uh, EU legislature as well, Ukrainian legislature, and uh, going back to uh, draft of CBAM. Um, uh, recital 47 uh, of the preamble of the CBAM Act uh, foresees special conditions for contracting partners uh, to the treaty uh, establishing the energy community uh, of parties uh, to association agreement, uh, including DCFTA, which means Ukraine. However, the CBAM Act uh, itself and its Annex 2 does not offer any special treatment for Ukraine. Uh, how, in fact, can Ukraine benefit from its party of association agreement status uh, in terms of uh, CBAM? I mean, there are still, um, I mean, sectoral talks especially going on. But for me, there's a bigger elephant in the room that we haven't talked about uh, for Ukraine, and that is um, the announcement has been has been made by the government to phase out coal by 2035 um, in electricity. So the question is, uh, what what to replace it with? 
and um, the discussion, uh, which is still controversial in the EU and which I think is key to Ukraine, is um, gas is a transition uh, fuel only, but a transition fuel for how long? Uh, a country that is that is uh, a gas producer, obviously, that is not relevant. The other one is um, if you've got a nuclear fleet. And if you've got plans potentially to replace your nuclear fleet with um, with a similar but uh, but updated uh, production plants, does that count in the green taxonomy really as green or not? Uh, and and that for me, in terms of electricity production and then potentially green electricity uh, exports uh, to the EU via an integrate by a sort of an integrated network, Moldova and Ukraine via NSOE. Um, so I think Marcus, we cannot hear you. Sorry. Um, some technical. Yeah, uh, I think we have to we have to go um, go forward, and then we will ask Marcus to come back with uh, with his answer. Um, so, um, Petras, can can I ask you to to join in this point because that was that was very important. Right. Yeah, that is very important from Nikolai to to hear that. That is, uh, Sibam is not to hurt friends, and you know, preparing to this discussion, I I I found uh, another statement of uh, other members of uh, European Parliament, and uh, I would like to say that uh, quite um, controversial because uh, member of Parliament, uh, European Parliament, Bernard Lange. Um, said that uh, states that um, enforcing uh, CO2 prices on some countries would uh, lead to severe economic uh, problems um, internally. And another member of European Parliament, Karin Karsbro, said that we have to deal equal treat. Uh, it doesn't matter where you come from, one kilogram of CO2 is the same uh, it doesn't matter if it is, comes from Sweden or China or United States, and I'm uh, adding from Ukraine. Um, how do you how do you judge uh, that positions? And uh, is it um, in the European Union open uh, to create special SIBAM uh, conditions for Ukraine, especially during the period of Russian? Uh, aggression, and we we all understand. We, we mentioned today about the allocation of of that industries. Right. Yes. Um, uh, Stipan, thank, thank you very you. much. Uh, look, uh, we we have to be very clear from the uh, very start that uh, it will apply not just to neighbors of the European Union, but uh, all over. I mean, since the European Union is a trading uh, union, an economic entity. So it will be applicable to each and every our trade partner. Of course, uh, those uh, remarks about the severe impact on uh, domestic situation, I think they are somehow completely correct. Because, I mean, there are different uh, economic structures in different countries and it will uh, you know, have a certain impact. I mean, a bigger, smaller, longer, shorter, it, it remains to be seen, but um, since we are under the joint uh, kind of initiative, this green deal, I mean, climate change, preventing the climate change uh, from happening. So we have to take uh, some commitment, but um, you know, at the same time, I'm completely practically minded. And uh, I agree with my colleagues, uh, with uh, Ivanka and others with uh, Taras, that we have to look after, you know, uh, practical uh, application of this uh, CBAM. Yes, we have some time because the CBAM is to come uh, starting from 26. It will be applied to five sectors in the beginning, most energy intense, 
it's clear. But um, we have to be ready for this. I mean, somehow, first of all, I mean, we have to prepare investment plans. And my question would be, I mean, to, and by the way, to the Ukrainian side, uh, are they ready? I mean, those investment, investment plans needed to transform, to modernize, or to change, you know, uh, the uh, energy consumption uh, intense sectors like uh, steel, uh, aluminum, uh, cement, uh, or uh, other uh, sectors we are speaking about into something more, let's say, less energy consuming and more efficient. So that would be my, you know, nothing like just to bring counter argument, but we know, I mean, it will cost, it will cost, and we have to be ready for this. The European, you know, budget uh, and the European Union came out with this uh, uh, energy, uh, excuse me, e e economic recovery and transformation plans. I mean, it's, it's big, 700 billion, um, euros and more. So we have distributed among the member states by um, by programs and so on. So that I understand. I mean, we on EU side, we have investment plans. And even more, I have to admit that private business will have to invest even more on its own side in order to be as competitive as possible and as green as possible as we are looking at the you know, uh, no exemption based uh, um, emissions cut. So that's why, to your question, I mean, could uh, Ukraine get uh, any um, special treatment in this regard? Um, you know, generally speaking, I don't see a big possibility to get a, a very special treatment. Uh, we might, I, I, get, I guess, agree on some transitional period a bit. But look, for Ukraine undertook a very ambitious plan to cut uh, emissions by 65%, starting from 1990. I understand that, I mean, a lot is already accomplished, but still, uh, I believe uh, remains to be done a lot in this regard. So that's why I think it, it, better, it would be better, I mean, to bring all sides as close as soon around the table and to speak with figures. I mean, you present figures, we present figures, we see a real picture, uh, absolutely real economic, real economy picture, and not a kind of, you know, very rosy picture. And we, we start talking with figures. So that's why I'm still very short of those figures. I can't make any conclusion out of this from our today's discussion, but uh, I'm sure we have to continue uh, step on, um, uh, uh, this discussion in order to come to this figures-based discussion, as your government officials will uh, present a uh, Ukrainian national investment plan, some sectorial picture, one by one. And this is a very important uh, exercise. I'm sure that partners are made for such discussions, and I'm, I'm ready, I mean, to uh, invest uh, as much time as needed in order to bring clarity and complete uh, understanding of us. Petros, thank you very much. That is a really very important statement, and uh, be sure that uh, we are we are we are happy to uh, to have next uh, next discussion based on the figures and more uh, specific um, um, information about uh, the impact of uh, of CBAM and other questions. And I think we can we can we can uh, propose for all sides uh, the next uh, next. Uh, uh, step of, of it. Um, so we have uh, we have one question uh, from from the audience, and uh, that is in Ukrainian language. But I will translate the, the question from Olga Boyko is um, about where where can we find the official position of Ukraine uh, about CBAM and uh, um, uh, the the late the late one uh, after summit of U EU Ukraine that was on the 12th of October. I guess we have to to ask uh, Irina Stavchuk about uh, that. Uh, and um, actually, um, my additional uh, question you mentioned during during your presentation 
uh, about the first step of Ukrainian ETS, uh, uh, I mean MRV system that was adopted by Ukrainian parliament. And uh, I just want to ask, um, um, do, do, you, uh, do you expect any assistance from European Union or maybe you already have some assistance uh, to, uh, to, to go forward in uh, creating Ukrainian ETS? Uh, Irina, the floor is yours, please. Yes, definitely. We see the carbon pricing and ETS as one of the main instruments in the future for Ukrainian climate policy. We already cooperate with GIZ. We also have established a continuation of project with World Bank Global Initiative, and it's called PMI. So the first PMR was focused on uh, MRV, and the next one, PMI, we, pers we uh, suppose it will be more focused on ETS. Um, there is, of course, the question, what kind type of ETS, what kind of system will be um, applicable and efficient in Ukraine? Because if we just take the current EU system with current, in some sectors, 100% um, payable allocation, no, like no free allocations in some sectors, so every ton of CO2 has to be paid, uh, for example, in the energy sector, I think it could be problematic in Ukraine. So we really have to look at different systems which exist in the world, uh, Chinese and others, and uh, kind of come up with a version of Ukrainian uh, ETS, which could be implementable, and then gradually come to the system which is in EU. Or maybe if we implement EU system directly, but with a different caps, because we don't believe that Ukraine would be able to have the similar level of um, carbon price, and it's uh, extremely high in EU now. And with our current 30 grivnas, which is more than the previous 10 grivnas, it's still uh, non-comparable to what is already in EU. And European ETS was developed in 20 years. So the companies were kind of getting into more stringent rules um, step by step. It would not be possible to have the same jump for Ukraine. But uh, we look at the system really as one of the important mechanisms, which has to be carefully designed and uh, carefully implemented. Thank you very much. And maybe you, you, can, you can say the, the link where our uh, Olga Boyko can find this uh, official position, maybe on, on the website of ministry or maybe in, 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 the, in the government website. It was a question on CBAM. Uh, the ministry is not responsible for the trade negotiations. It's mainly Minister of Economy. So we'll, I mean, if Taras is with us, no, Taras is not with us. Mm. Um, okay, we will recommend. I mean, ideally to write a request, yeah, because it's not our ministry who is dealing directly with. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Sorry, uh, we missed you a little bit earlier, uh, so we didn't hear your conclusions. You you have a you have a choice for for two minutes to to add, please. Uh, sorry, that we yes, the system the system kicked me out. Apologies. No, the point I was I was trying to make is, um, as as Ukraine uh, goes towards uh, decarbonization, the role that nuclear or gas can play in that uh, transition, I think is absolutely critical. And that is where the EU is also still divided in terms of taxonomy. So that might be an important case to make, uh, to take into, into consideration uh, for the EU sort of where, where Ukraine comes from as a base. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you very much. So, um, Ivana, uh, I want to I want to to come back to to you and uh, uh, I I think that uh, Petras uh, proposed good uh, good idea to um, intensify our communication and our discussion. That was extremely the same, especially the same that you proposed to to make much more uh, 
important role of uh, Ukrainian parliament, uh, uh, environmental and uh, European integration committees. And um, I think it is, uh, it is uh, time to do. And uh, in this regards, um, I'm, I'm a little bit scared about uh, the success of such, uh, of such common work and I feel some threats uh, about the influence of uh, uh, unsuccessful, um, if I may predict, uh, unsuccessful um, work uh, on uh, CBAM implementation on uh, European integration, understanding and support uh, in Ukrainian society. Do you feel uh, this uh, threat? I know that you are very often visiting uh, eastern parts of, of Ukraine and you, you have good understanding uh, what, is, what is there and uh, can, can you share with us uh, your thoughts and your ideas on, on that? Uh, with your permission, very briefly, because I do have also to round up my participation in the event. Um, well, first, uh, let me just uh, briefly uh, react to, to questions that Petras has been putting on the table. I think very good questions. Um, uh, I do not think that the Ukrainian government has any of such proposals um, on the table. We have heard that some of the proposals on, on uh, investment plans not necessarily connected uh, with uh, CBAM, um, yeah, uh, with uh, CPAM or with uh, Green Deal or with, with uh, anything uh, connected with climate change, but have been introduced during, uh, well, in what was it, in September of, of uh, this year in the United States. Uh, it was announced that there is such existing transformation plan of Ukraine, but uh, as we figured out after numerous um, letters that we've sent to Office of the President and um, Cabinet of Ministers that at this particular moment such a transformation plan does not exist and this um, sectoral investment uh, opportunities are not yet worked out. So I think it's a good portion and a good incentive for the Ukrainian government, uh, both from your side and maybe we'll follow up on this here with, with the parliamentarians um, to try to seek such a um complex vision uh with what we should address the uh, european union in order to actually get to that idea of mine with this climate marshall plan definitely climate marshall plan has to have a a concrete backing and specific projects i think that that's um what is important with regard to or stop your question whether uh, the change, um, the, the necessity to respond to challenges um, that, that could be, or will be rather, I think, uh, coming to Ukraine from um, implementation of the Green Deal goals and targets. I think it's about proper, uh, both bureaucratic work, but also about proper communication because it's important, I think, to explain that this is our chance um, for our economy to actually survive. This is not the choice we have in, um, you know, whether we will be moving with a faster or slower pace. It's about uh, being left out totally or about actually catching up. And I think that, uh, that if we see this as an challenging but still an opportunity then um coordinating all the efforts inside the country based on specific figures on specific numbers with very honest discussion both internally but also externally we can actually move ahead and then i think um it won't have negative impact on the association um agreement or on the on our europe uh, your integration um, aspirations here in Ukraine, but definitely there will be forces in Ukraine that will uh, want to use it as a as a negative uh, uh, in a negative connotation. So here, I think we both 
uh, from within Ukraine and from within the EU uh, should be partners in ensuring that we are not creating additional um, animosity to the difficult processes uh, and rather uh, portray them as a difficult but still an opportunity for us where we are on board together. But there, uh, we are also lacking yet this goodwill and also very honest and very sincere attitude from the European Union on that as well. Uh, thank you, Ivanka, for that uh, positive uh, conclusion. And I would like to support you that uh, definitely this work uh, can lead us to, to have a technological elevator for all Ukrainian uh, economy industry and uh, make it, it will make us more competitive and more stronger that is uh, it could be about innovations about new working places uh, it could be yes. about technologies it could be about totally other level of development and so th i think that that's where we have to how we can actually quote and unquote sell it to positively sell it both to ukrainian businesses and to ukrainian public and to the ukrainian co um, community Right, and uh, that's, that's the time. That's right. That is the time, Ivanka, to create, to start creation of of your Ma Marshall Plan. That is very, very nice uh, idea, and uh, I see uh, smiles on all our um, faces. That means that all of us support support your idea, and uh, we are ready, I guess, to to start this this work. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ivanka. Uh, Petras, look, uh, we are out of time and uh, actually looks like that all of us <laughs> were able to, to, to talk. Uh, and I'm really happy because we, we had uh, quite different uh, uh, points of view, but uh, the, the same conclusions. And uh, uh, talking about conclusions, um, the, the main one is that Ukraine and EU are open to discuss uh, CBAM and paper is on a table and we have not so many time to, to work together, but uh, we have to use this opportunity and to show uh, our integrity and our um, common, common will. And uh, uh, referring uh, Petras to, to your idea that we, we start good uh, conversation, but we need much more higher level uh, next step um, let 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 agree that uh, we will discuss uh, this idea together and uh, come back with 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 some uh, with some plan uh, that will correlate with the Ukrainian plan of implementation of of that investments that that you said and that is in a correlation that uh, uh, Ivana stressed about uh, modernization and uh, uh, that that work. Um, so thank you for, for, for all uh, participants. And uh, that was very important to, to hear from uh, government side uh, what, what, what has been done already and uh, what is the plans for, for the next, uh, next stage. And uh, that is important that Ukrainian government uh, has ambition and uh, we have to support them to, to, uh, to to talk with Ukrainian industry, with Ukrainian parliament, and with our partners in EU to, to work together. And that is extremely important in a time of uh, Russian aggression that we, we are faced. And especially this, uh, this uh, point, uh, this, this moment that is uh, in escalation. And uh, we have to, to be stronger. And we can be stronger together with the cooperation with our friends and partners in the European Union. Petras, maybe you would like to 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 add uh, some 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 words uh, and uh, to finish our um, our conversation. Thank you, Ostap. Thank you for this joint uh, work. It's it's a good example. But let's be clear. I mean, it's just the beginning, and we are facing a huge transformational. Uh, you know, process. I mean, expensive, long-term, and with no alternative. So it's better to prepare all the plans. I mean, to know um, what is money about, where the money might come from, how much we need all in all. And, you know, I mean, combine all the efforts. 
And I think this is a, a very right time, I mean, to speak about this now, because we need, uh, we need uh, a couple of years, I mean, at least, I mean, for complete kind of uh, adjustment of our expectations and possibilities. And here we are, I mean, we are partners. So that's why there is no question, should we talk and can we talk? We have to talk and, and we have channels open. With your politicians like Ivanka, like others, I mean, we know them. They are very good friends of us. We know you uh, as an expert, so let's do it. On your uh, remark concerning the tensions uh, uh, coming up and threatening from the Russian uh, side, you know, Ostap, it's completely unacceptable. We know it. I mean, uh, we know who is an aggressor, and we're looking forward. I mean, uh, continuously to support Ukraine um, uh, withstanding all kind of pressures and the war um, from coming from the Russian side. So there should be no question at all. Is there solidarity and understanding from our side? There is, and we will stand by Ukraine as long as it needed. Slava Ukraini. Thank you.